I'm Kevin Cameron and here I am in my little shop and today I want to talk about something that you hope you'll never have to look at, the gearbox. Normally it's buried inside the engine. This is the upper crankcase of an engine that's taken apart for this purpose and these are the two shafts, gearbox shafts. This is the output shaft, the drive sprocket would go here this is the counter shaft. The clutch would mount on here and would be driven by the crankshaft which lies in these saddles. This is called a constant mesh gearbox because you'll notice, this is a five speed, one, two, three, four, five, that all of these gears are meshing together. This transmission is in neutral because I can turn the clutch shaft and the output shaft doesn't turn. In very olden times, before the 1930s, there were sliding gear transmissions where gear teeth actually were crashed in and out of engagement. But gear teeth have to be quite precisely shaped in order to endure transmitting very large forces of contact from one shaft to another. So the idea of sliding gears into and out of engagement was given up a long time ago. That leaves us with constant mesh transmissions. Now, in order to change from neutral to another speed, there's a part underneath these two shafts called the shift drum. Here's one which I've removed. By rotating it, the positions of these shift forks, which move the gears, are changed. Each shift fork in turn makes a movement. The gears have to be completely under control at all times because the last thing in the world you want from your gearbox is a double engagement to be in two gears at once. So I'm going to apply this screwdriver to the end of the shift drum that is actually in the engine and we'll see how shifting goes. This is this is first gear engaging here. We can tell that it's first because it's the biggest gear on the output shaft. The smallest gear on the clutch shaft. Now, it's no longer in neutral. These square slots here and square pegs here constitute a dog set. Every other gear on each shaft is locked to the shaft and the gears between them are free to spin. So in order to select one of these pairs, of which there are five, we have to engage dogs such that the gear pair we want to drive the motorcycle, is both of those gears are locked to their shafts. And that's what the shift drum accomplishes. There's first. Next it will shift to second. Please shift to second. There it shifts into second. And of course we can't just sit here and run the gears through the whole uh, five speeds because if two of the dogs don't fit one dog into one slot, but instead one dog hits the other, it can't engage. And we can see that right here. This gear is locked to the shaft by a spline. This gear is free to spin. So in order to lock this gear to the shaft, this gear moves over, click, its dogs lock this gear to the shaft. That process is used throughout the five speeds to give us gear shifting. The shift drum with the shift forks on it which move the gears by engaging into these slots like this. The shift drum has to be held fixed in each gear position and that is accomplished by this little lever here which presses against these dowel pins. 
so that as you shift click it goes into one gear and holds the shift drum in that speed then you move the shift pedal again click it pulls it into the next speed and the pulling is accomplished by a shift shaft this hook engages the pins on the shift drum so that when the shift pedal is moved this way it pushes the shift drum that way when you rotate the shift pedal the other way it pulls the shift drum in the opposite direction this little spring holds this claw against the pins anyway that is a an overview of in general how gearboxes work every other gear is locked to the shaft the gears between them are free to spin the dogs which are engaged and disengaged by the shift forks on the shift drum are what lock the desired pair of gears to their respective shafts so that the drive passes through that pair and the others are freewheeling. That I think is uh, about as far as I'm going to go with this description because then it gets interesting.